44-year-old Walter Odong, a resident of Gulu municipality in Gulu district, was 30 years old when he heard of the strange disease. He immediately appointed himself a volunteer. I was working alone. I was able to buy disinfectant. I remember I bought two cartons of jig, gave it to schools within the municipality. I started also talking to people about Ebola. The information he had to work with was from what the media was reporting. He also read leaflets handed to the community. He vividly remembers when he might have contracted the virus. Obedi had already contracted Ebola, but it hasn't come to the knowledge of the medical personnel. So when I touched Obedi's bed, I had already touched Ebola. Fortunately, his wife, also informed about the disease upon return from the hospital, told him to have his own bed. There was a severe fever that uh, I started experiencing, a lot of cold, a lot of serious coldness. Treated for malaria like many, Odong's symptoms persisted after two weeks while the Ebola virus thrived. He sought opinion in another clinic from a lab tech who gave him the first hint at the seriousness of his situation. A strange disease in your blood whereby even the white blood cell is running away. He went to Glow Hospital, but no one there suspected him to have Ebola. Again, he went back home. Stomach was swelling, the cells had swollen, all body, whatever, had already changed. Even my color had already changed to white. I became a white man from nowhere. Only his brother's wife, a nurse from Lachu, suspected he had the viral disease. She came to his home and referred him to Lachu. Brother Elio, who was there in church of Barrio, said, Florence, he was calling my brother's wife, he said, Florence, what you do, you go home, tell the home people that we are bringing the dead body tomorrow, very early in the morning. But Walter was a fighter, even when he was further isolated because of fear of his stomach bursting. I was admitted on the 25th of November. Then on the 5th of December, when Dr. Lokuya was being laid to rest, that was the time uh, one of the doctors came and said, Walter, we could have come for you yesterday, but I've come to, come, to, come to break for you this news that you are Ebola negative. I say you are stupid. <laughs> because I could not believe. He went back to a sensitized but still edgy community, just like Abraham Lincoln Ochora, a member in the now somewhat defunct Ebola Survivors Association, formed by Walter. Some other people were stopping that children not to go to my home. Say, don't go there, that one is Ebola's home. Abraham got Ebola from his neighbor. He had touched the sick man. One day, as returned home from school, he found that this neighbor was being buried. He knew he had it. I took two, two weeks in the hospital. When I was discharged in the morning, in the, in the afternoon, in the morning, they announced that uh, Dr. Lukuya had passed away. I left Walter there in the hospital and this friend of mine. Every night, every day, people were passing. Because of the stigma, they were given certificates proving that they were not infectious. Then all my clothes and everything was burned. Even in the hospital, when they give you water to drink with this mug here, after drinking the water, that mug will be burned straight away. You are supposed to use a, a, a bed sheet only for two days. We did not trust our laundry anymore. We did not know if there was still a baller hiding in the laundry machine. We had again to destroy all those laundry machines which were there. The survivors tried to piece their lives back, but it was not easy. I declared myself a candidate for Chairman LC3 Laibi Division. There are others who could say, how can you take a traumatized person like him, a person who may survive for only two years? He survived two term limits until 2011 when he retired. They all, however, agree that the disease came with some advantages. Very many people could just come at the door site, drop some money there and walk away. In Abraham's area, many families started wishing for at least one family member to have Ebola because of the benefits they were receiving. The happiest moment was when the rebels retracted. There was a radio communication saying, avoid body contact. So who are you then, whether rebel or what, go and arrest people, abduct people? Benjamin got Ebola from his girlfriend. 
She died and was buried at the military burial barracks. He too saw some good come out of the period. When they come to abduct people in our village, if someone said that home is the home of Ebola, they will just run away. No rebel could come after our home. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Abraham shows me the certificate signed 14 years ago by Dr. Matthew Roquia, the medical superintendent, and Dr. Pierre Cotti, the director of La Chaux Hospital. They are both now deceased. He had to show all his neighbors the certificate to be accepted back in the community. Even the rebels who had come to abduct some girls from Sacred Heart Secondary School, which is just right above his home, he had to get out this certificate to prove that he was indeed Ebola free. The memories live with them. Abraham still carries all the documents he ever got from Lacho Hospital, including the list of the deceased and that of the survivors where his name is. Benjamin is ready to be part of the sensitization force to help the community go through any such outbreak. In the last part of this series, I'll be telling you how these men have been helping the Uganda Virus Research Institute in seeking answers as to why and how they survived. Could they be part of finding a vaccine, treatment, or even a cure? Flores Salimba, NTV in Gulu district. Ebola can be defeated. Amen to that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>